channel and welcome to our married, married morning routine. routine. <laughs> uh, so most days we aimed ape, aimed ape. We aim to wake up around seven. Some days it's later. Some days Tyler wakes up earlier to work out. But today we're just going to be taking you through what a typical morning would look like when we're both at home. So usually when we wake up, this guy will go shower first thing, and I'll start my morning routine. So let's go. Lucky you get to see our faces first thing in the morning. <laughs> Usually once Tyler finishes showering, he'll come over and make some coffee. <laughs> if I'm in a coffee mood, he'll make me some. But as you guys know, I go back and forth between coffee and matcha, and I think I'm probably in a matcha mood today. So maybe I'll make some after <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Tyler hates matcha. And share the recipe, because I know I've been getting some questions about how I make it. Tyler thinks it tastes like, what do you think it tastes like? Grass. Like you literally went outside, mowed the lawn, and made tea with it. <laughs> Which I'm right. right. Comment down below, coffee or matcha. So once I finish my quiet time, I usually get started on breakfast while Tyler finishes his quiet time. And since I always share in my vlogs a takeaway from my quiet time or my Bible reading, I thought it would be fun for this video for Tyler and I to both share takeaways from our quiet times. And so we'll do that when we sit down for breakfast because that's something that Tyler and I will sometimes talk about when we eat breakfast anyways. But before we make the breakfast, I want to tell you guys about the next part of my morning routine. And I am so excited to be working with Ritual for this portion of today's video. So Ritual has literally been a dream sponsorship because I just love this vitamin brand. Why I love them, you can literally trace the ingredients they use through their supply chain on their website. And I just love the transparency of that, that you can see exactly what they're putting in here and why. And also on the website, you can see all the different ingredients in the multivitamin, and you can click on each ingredient to see why our bodies need that particular nutrient and like the scientific studies behind it. I think one of the best ways to form a habit is to pair it with something that is already an existing habit. And you guys know I love my breakfast. And so the easiest way for me to remember to take my vitamin is to take it while I'm making my breakfast. And the thing I love about Ritual as well is that you can take it either with food or on an empty stomach. I know in the past I've tried other vitamin brands, but you couldn't take it on an empty stomach because if you did, you would get an upset stomach. And so I would have to remember to take it after breakfast, but I love this because I can just take it as I'm cooking. And then they also have this little mint tab in the container that just keeps things fresh and minty. So when you take the vitamin, it just has that fresh taste. I of course, try to eat healthy but it can be really challenging to get all the nutrients you need from food alone so I love knowing that with taking my ritual multivitamin those nutrient gaps are getting covered and so if you want to try out ritual which I would highly recommend you can get 20% off your first month using the code KC20 using the link down in my description so Tyler and I usually have eggs for breakfast he'll typically have fried eggs with sourdough toast and a lot of times I'll have a scramble with like veggies veggies and avocado in it just because I like to get the extra vegetables in but then some days like today I'll have fried eggs and sourdough with him. Let's make breakfast because your girl's starving. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. 
So I think it's funny how everybody eats their eggs differently. I eat the white part first and then I save the yolk so I can poke it and use the bread to soak up the yolk part. But Tyler cuts everything up and puts it all together and then eats it on the toast. Comment down below. How do you eat your eggs? We just finished breakfast. So I thought we'd share our quiet time takeaways. Do you want to go first or do you want to go first? Uh, you can go first, baby. Okay, go first. So, I am currently in a Bible study that Tara is doing at our church, going through the book of Acts. We've talked about Tara before, um, and she has a ton of great Bible study content on her channel as well, Blooms and Benedictions. I'll have it linked. I always do the wrong side. I think it's over here. Um, but we're going through Acts, and so I was reading chapter 3 in preparation for that, and it's when Peter and John, first of all, they've just all received the Holy Spirit, and then Peter and John heal this man who was lame from birth, and he was like sitting at Solomon's portico, which is like the temple, and so they heal this man, and everybody's amazed, and they're in wonder and awe and everything, and they're gathering around Peter and John, and when Peter saw this crowd, he says, men of Israel, this is verse 12, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? And then he goes into saying, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, who you, talking to the people, delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate. And then he continues on in verse 15 saying, you killed the author of life, again talking about Jesus, but God raised him from the dead and to this we are witness. And by his name, by faith in his name, this man who was lame from birth has been made well, or he's strong whom you see now. And so basically these people are quick to marvel at Peter and John just saying like, wow, look at what you guys have done. And they are so quick to redirect the glory back to God. But not only do they redirect the glory back to God, they literally use it as an opportunity to present the gospel. Like I was just reading through, they say like, you know, you guys handed over Jesus to be killed, but God raised him up again. And then he continues on to be saying, repent therefore so that your sins may be blotted out and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And so I just thought that was really cool because I feel like it was a good reminder, like when, you know, people like God uses us to do cool things or to work in powerful ways like and people are like wow look at what God did or kind of deflect the glory onto you like how quick are we to redirect that glory to God or like and this is me asking myself or do I kind of be like oh yeah like look look what God did or look what God used me to do um but just that I don't know it was just cool to see how quick they are like they won't let any of that glory on them linger they redirect to God but not only that they then present the gospel they like take any opportunity they can to present the gospel and I was talking to Tyler about this and like I feel like I just think of the example even of somebody being like wow you have so much joy like not only just saying like oh yeah that's Jesus in me but being like oh yeah that's Jesus in me let me tell you about him like I just think that's really cool and that's one of the reasons why I love reading through the book of Acts because I feel like there's just such boldness and like the early disciples that's honestly always really convicting to read and also encouraging. So that's what I read today. What about you, babe? Love it, baby. Thanks, baby. So I've been reading through 1 Corinthians the past couple days, and one of the things recently that I've just started to, I don't know, really zone in on is this idea that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And if you remember in the Gospels, Jesus refers to himself as a temple, and talking about how if you tear down the temple or rebuild it in three days, stuff like that. But then Paul goes, and especially in 1 Corinthians, but throughout his letters, talks about how we ourselves are actually temples of the Holy Spirit. There's this classic verse in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and here he's talking about sexual immorality. And he says, you know, flee from sexual immorality. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? who is in you, whom you have received from God. And here he's talking about it in a specific context, but the way that he says it of like, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Like this seems to be like a core facet of the way that Paul thinks about us as believers. And so he kind of says it in passing. And I think we read over it and of course we use it correctly in saying like, hey, we need to keep our bodies pure because they're temples. But I think we also in talking about it like that almost like reduce what paul is saying like this is crazy like we are literally the temples like temples that people took decades to build before jesus came uh and now we ourselves are that temple we are the place 
where heaven meets earth because that's what a temple was. A temple is where God's presence literally dwelt on earth. Mm -hmm. And now God's presence dwells on earth through us by Jesus being in us. And not only as individuals here, but Paul also says that in chapter 3, right here in uh, verse 16. He says, don't you know that you yourselves, now he's saying you plural, you yourselves are God's temple, that God's spirit dwells in your midst. Now he's saying, if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. So God's spirit dwells in us. God's spirit dwells in us collectively as believers, as the church throughout the entire world. And that is how one of the main ways uh, that God's presence comes to earth now is through us, through his believers, because we are united with him in spirit, just as he says in chapter 6. Once again, whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. And so that's been like a really powerful uh, reminder, just something I've been dwelling on a lot lately, and it was just happened to be in my morning reading today as well. And so it's really cool to kind of go through that and reflush it out in my mind and think through it. So. I don't know, I was almost getting kind of emotional as you were saying that, because I feel like we hear that all the time, like, yeah, we're temples of the Holy Spirit, but just, like, the way you're fleshing that out, that, like, the purpose of a temple was, like, that's where God's presence dwelled, and that we literally, like, carry in us the presence of God, yeah. like, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, and I don't know, something about the way you said that, I was just like, well, that's it's, crazy. It's a high calling, and it's crazy, it's, like, humbling, but also, like, I don't know, it's just like crazy to think like, wow, like God is using us in such a powerful way and how often do we take that for granted? Mm -hmm. Like we are literally the place where God dwells on earth and unleashes his power through us as believers. So. And I feel like that ties into this verse too because it's like, yeah, like you're saying God works through us in amazing ways and anytime like people can see that, that's that opportunity like from my passage that I read mm -hmm. to like redirect that back to God and say like, exactly. this is God in me, you know? Um, so good. Which is super cool. Also, and I feel like it ties into the ritual sponsorship <laughs> because, like, I don't know, we talk, like, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, and I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of times when we think about eating healthy or, you know, making sure we get our vitamins and stuff, it's for the purpose of just, like, health or even, like, vanity of wanting to look a certain way, which, like, not that those things are, like, health is obviously bad in and of itself, but remembering, like, we nourish our bodies, too, because they're literally temples of the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know? Um, and then also the verse Tyler referenced, the First Corinthians 6, what is it, 6, 16, um, the flee from sexual immorality because every other sin is against, um, this is the sin that's against your own body. We talked about that verse, just to plug it in our <laughs> physical boundaries video yep. that we filmed before we were married, just like boundaries for dating. So check that out if you haven't already. But that is our little quiet time tidbits. Hopefully those were encouraging. Um, usually after breakfast, Tyler will go get ready for work. You usually leave, like, what, a little bit before 9? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's work at 9, so i got to leave a little before that. Yeah. And then, so he'll go get ready for work, like, get dressed and all that, and then I'll start work. Um, you leave a little later on Thursdays, though. I talked mm -hmm. about that in my last vlog. Um, he goes to work later on Thursdays because he works later on Thursdays yep. for worship rehearsal. And so we've been doing, like, our little family meetings on Thursday mornings, which I explained what we do for that in the last vlog, if you want to check that out. But he goes and gets ready for work, and then I start my work day right over here oh, let me mute. This is my matcha so to make a matcha latte you're basically making a matcha shot and then you're adding your milk and so the first thing I'm gonna do is heat up some water while that's heating up I'm gonna go ahead and prep my milk I like to use oat milk okay while that milk is frothing I'm gonna go ahead and take my hot water and pour just a couple ounces of water into this bowl Next, I'm going to take a teaspoon of matcha powder and put it in the hot water. And now it's time to whisk. This is just a bamboo whisk I got from Amazon. I'll have one linked down below. But you're going to whisk in a zigzag motion until you see no more clumps of matcha in the water. Once you have your matcha shot, it's time to just go ahead and pour that directly into your mug. 
This can get a little messy, so I like to do it over the sink. And now it's time for the happiest part, which is to pour your frothed milk into the cup. Alrighty, I'm gonna go enjoy this now and get back to work, but that is our married morning routine. I hope that you enjoyed it, and thank you again to Ritual for working with me on this video. Again, if you want to check them out, you can get 20% off your first month with the code KC20 through the link down in my description. But if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and then also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.